Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am back with Omar Isaf, and we are going to be doing another a fatness Q and A. A fatness Q and A. Fitness. 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 Fatness. Q &A. Fitness. Fatness. Collaboration. Q &A. Collab. I'm the fitness. He's the fatness. We never had a friend like <laughs> you. Were gonna say that. How did I know that? We actually filmed a Q&A yesterday, but you guys are seeing this video many Weeks ago. Yes. All this content's so fresh. <laughs> yes. You know, we just, guys, we just want to provide the best for you, so, uh. Surprise, we're back. Like shorter. the video. <laughs> like the video, if you like the video. Get it to how many likes you said before? 50,000 likes. 5,000 is a good goal, I think, for your channel. 50,000 likes. And what will happen? Omar will moon the internet. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> That's the jazz line. Hey, why I do I always say that? Let's just jump right oh, into I it. I hate that. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. There okay. are some, I want you guys to know that there's just about over 200 questions. <laughs> jazz is actually really picky with the questions. I really am. Yeah. Well, because some of them I feel like we've already talked about. Even if it's been years, I'm like, we've already answered this. Okay, uh, let's see. Micacia says... I was having a crisis in my head because I'm actually used to just answering the same question yearly. I know. So... <laughs> Where you're like, I'm never answering it again. I'm like, never? <laughs> Ever again? Ever? Macacia says, how do you fix lower back arch during squats? Wow. I don't know the order of what we're releasing, but girl, Oh, we probably already in... put up the video at this oh, point. So, <laughs> thanks for choreographing. <laughs> hit, hit, the car, hit the card in the video to the figure card. out how uh, to fix your arch. Yeah, so what that is, is people often don't have the mobility, actually the upper body mobility, so the thoracic mobility. So what will end up happening, you know, you have to have the bar on your back, your shoulders have to externally rotate, they don't have that rotation. And so instead they'll puff their chest up, which extension in one part of the spine will lead to something else. So they're extending here, butt juts out, puts a lot of pressure on that lower back, and then you'll notice a butt wink will preemptively occur. What you wanna do before you squat, make sure actually to squeeze your glutes, brace your core, and have that mobility and you'll be all right. And if you want a fuller breakdown again, hit the card, watch the video. He does a full analysis of- Full. Fuck. He does a full, is that better? Full. He does an analysis of, of squats and he teaches how to do the things. So make sure to watch it and you will learn even more than his rapid fire answer. Um, okay. Think that you can catch it. Oh. What if we just had a QA which was the in-between parts? So instead of <laughs> the questions, just you're like, okay, and you're just scrolling. It's a five-minute compilation. It actually would be a really funny video. Like an April Fool's Day. I like it. That's good. I like it. Just Squat says, what's your opinion on diet programs like RP? Oh, Renaissance Periodization, yeah, it stands for. Mike Isretel is very knowledgeable and I actually, I don't, I haven't looked at any of their diet programs, but I know Mike is very smart and I would trust his opinion when it comes to those things. So essentially, I, I think they have templates and once again, they could totally work. For anyone out there that is interested in dieting or anything like that, just make sure you do your due diligence so you do your research before you decide to purchase something. Yeah. RP, however, is a good resource for sure. And generally, Omar doesn't just back anybody, so if he's backing them, they're probably actually legit. Yeah. Abernal34, how important is it to count macros if my goal is athleticism rather than a built physique? Ooh. So. He liked that one. <laughs> Oh, huh. huh. I think there's three different goals when it comes to nutrition. There's health, yes. which is a separate category. There's body composition, so how you look, if you want to lose weight, if you want to build muscle, and then there's performance. So some individuals, if your sport doesn't require you to build more muscle mass, then it's not as important to focus on diligently tracking your macros. But at the same time, you want to make sure you're fueling your body. So you want to make sure you're getting enough micronutrients. You want to make sure you're making good food choices. Right. It's a different category. And so you don't have to be as specific when it comes to your macronutrients. But I do think you need to focus on the big picture. So getting your micronutrients so your body can recover. Uh, so DOMS from whatever sport you're doing. I'm going to assume anyone that plays any sort of fitness physical activity or any sport, it's at least several hours a week. Yeah. Staying hydrated, all those things. So you don't have to focus on the minutia, so the macronutrients, like, oh, I'm, I'm three carb over. But focusing on, yeah, am I eating my fruits, my vegetables, drinking enough water, because having plenty of protein. Because you don't want to become a potato. A what? A potato. Chelsea ACO, how important is meeting the fat goal when counting macros? I can't ever get enough. I relate. Hmm. To what macro for you? Fats. Because I'm just a carb person. So like a lot of the things that I Go on, no, I'm listening. A lot of the things that I eat are not very 
Is there, an, is there a problem? <laughs> I was listening to what you're saying. I know that smirk and you're judging the shit out of me. So, uh... One that one. group bought those. That is not me. I have nothing to do with this at all. What are... These are that <laughs> is all Roof. However, he did tell me I have to try the Wonder Bar, so make sure. Can you just hand me that? Oh, you've never had a Wonder Bar? No, I haven't. It actually is tasty. Thank you. Okay, so you need to find sources of whatever macro you're deficient in that you enjoy. Uh, same Avocados. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, avocados for sure. Protein, I was gonna say, is usually a big one for women just because it's like, man, I don't wanna cook chicken out, a beef, this and that. There are other sources like I talked about in the previous QA beans, lentils, mm -hmm. uh, egg whites. When it comes to fat sources, they're actually the most calorically dense. So theoretically, it should be the easiest to consume. Carbohydrates, if you don't like carbs for whatever reason, eating enough carbs actually could be, in my opinion, harder, whereas fat, Olive oil, coconut oil, uh, nuts, uh, yeah, nut butters, uh, seeds, you mentioned avocado, are all great sources, but a tablespoon of olive oil is, you know, 13 to 15 grams of fat. Right. And the average person, the, their fat intake for the day is probably anywhere between 45 grams on the very low end towards 90 grams. So it's not that hard. Is it enjoyable? Now that's something else. That's where you gotta, yeah. you know, maybe incorporate a kale salad is uh, something that I like. Sprinkle some olive oil, some red chili uh, flakes and so forth. Just make it a little bit more flavorful because yeah. someone's just thinking, you don't wanna be like me when I was bulking <laughs> and I was hitting oh. those oh. numbers and you just, I took shots of olive oil just to hit like the fat Are you amount. serious? That's how I bulked from 145 oh, to 215. God. That was peak performance <laughs> that's days. so disgusting. I was dedicated. That's wrong. I actually will say like, I don't have as much of an issue now when it comes to consuming fat because I have figured out the things that I like and it is definitely things like avocado, nut butters, and it's even as simple as like putting it on a piece of toast or on a bagel or like if you're making scrambled eggs, you can also add olive oil to something like that. <laughs> add what? <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do right now, guys, and this is very exciting, you're gonna do a live taste test of this Wonder Bar that we brought. So, how about you just give it a go? But I'm cutting. Look, it's, ouch. <laughs> it's only 700 calories. So one bite of this is probably about 50 calories. Okay, this is the first thing I've had to eat today, so we're just You don't have right. to preamble, you gotta just, you know, describe what you're seeing. <laughs> you're holding it weird. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh no. You should lick your bottom lip. There. It's still there. <laughs> like some caramel stuff. <laughs> it's a string. Okay. Uh, turn me. <laughs> it was dangling off of your lip the whole time, and you're like, <laughs> it's still there. Okay, so give, give your feedback. What's going on here? On the candy bar. Milk chocolate. Right. There's a crunch. Yeah. I don't know if it's an outer shell within the chocolate, mm -hmm. or if it's just the peanuts. The caramel is very chewy. Right, so how does it stack up compared to your average chocolate bar? Full. Oh. I'm gonna give it a 9.2 out of 10. That is such a high score. <laughs> Are you sure that I didn't introduce you to Musketeers? Three Musketeers? I'm just asking the question because I've that's- I've been eating Three Musketeers since I was like five. So you're sure I didn't introduce it to you? Did you know me when I was five? I was seven. <laughs> no, you I said, weren't. try this kid. We're not seven. Agree to disagree. The internet doesn't know your age, but I can confirm you were not seven years old. Oh, six. Good point. Okay. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> Go on. Ask your questions. No, what were you going to say? <laughs> what was that? Just? What do you feel like? <laughs> Natalie Sahagan says, if I'm eating as I normally do, but start working out, will I see progress? This is something that I always think about when I've like been out of the gym forever. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, I can keep eating what I'm eating, but yeah. if I'm going to the gym like three times a week. There should be some sort of improvement yeah. because of the fact that like I'm going from no activity to something. Great question. But maybe not a ton. Of There's progress. a few things to consider in my opinion. One, what your current body fat level is. So if your body fat level is over a certain threshold, even if you eat what you're currently eating and you start training, you'll build muscle, but you won't be able to really notice it because there is that layer of fat. Right. For guys, it occurs, you know, there's that gray area between 13 to 18% body fat. For women, it's, you know, above 20% uh, body fat, I'd say definitely, which is, you know, most people, it's harder to determine, oh, like, oh yeah, my arms are looking a little bit better, or my legs are growing. It's harder to objectively measure those things. But, so then, if anything, if they are building the muscle underneath the fat, won't they, if anything, start feeling larger? Yeah. Oh yeah. no, that that no, that's definitely a possibility. Yeah. So you might even think, and that's why it, it kind of is the 
Britney Spears effect that happened years and years ago where, uh, you know, she started out, she started caring about her lifting and she started doing endless crunches and she started doing a oh, lot of core yeah. movements and her core actually got blocked here. And I'm not trying to scare anyone out uh, there because she did reportedly, I think a thousand crunches a day, just an absurd amount, an, an absurd amount. No one out there is going to do that in yeah. your waist if you do core movements, it's not going to look like that. But she developed hypertrophy, she got more muscle in that area, and so it just looked thicker. So some people that is a concern where your certain body fat level, you start training and you think you're getting bulkier, but really what's happening, that muscle gives you shape, and when you lean down, you'll really appreciate that. Yeah. I don't think anyone, when they've leaned down, any woman, unless they're a complete genetic outlier, in which case you should be competing in the Olympia, <laughs> ever was truly upset about the amount of muscle mass they had when they leaned down. And I think actually, just to use you as an example, Jazz, remember how you used to say to me, oh, but I have a lot of muscle in my hips and my lower body. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I feel that's why, you know, my hips look a certain way. And then you got the scan, the uh, DEXA scan, yeah. the uh, the fat scan. We saw it actually was just fat. Yeah. Right? No, it's like, not, actually, so no, that, nothing but fat. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. So no, it's really, just that's, a reality, that's a reality to face. And so if, if for you, the first step in developing habits is just getting to the gym and then you want to focus on your nutrition, by all means. Yeah. But just keep that in mind. So it's, you're playing a longer game because it'd be harder to see those results. No, one of these has 440 calories. That's dense. <laughs> that's fucked. That's actually a good point. Can I just yeah. raise a point? It's not Go a question, it. but just, yeah. All right, so we're looking at this chocolate bar right here, okay? It's oh, no Henry. Oh, Henry Reese's peanut butter. Mm. Per each fucking chocolate bar, it is 440 size. calories. So there's two of them. So in total, it's 880. 880 for the oh. whole, yeah, it's per one bar. So that makes about 60 grams of fat and like 90, 90 grams of carbs. 20 yeah. grams of protein though. It's not bad. So what I was gonna say about this bar, where a lot of women I find struggle, is when it comes to portion sizes. And this is where it's unfair, actually, for women, straight up in society. Because when you go to a restaurant and you order whatever, let's say you want the fish, you want uh, uh, the salmon with rice, there's only one portion size. Yeah. So, and that portion size is catered towards men. And so what you'll notice is when you order, once again, the salmon, it's a thousand calories. There's not the equivalent 600 calorie portion. Right. And so we've been brought up, even the size of dinner plates and all those things, it's one standard size. I actually never thought about that. I have, unfortunately. <laughs> is uh, what ends up happening is that you become accustomed. You see, if you see a big ass plate and you know, like, okay, I should be eating less than a guy because you know my BMR is a less. But I probably am around seventeen hundred calories. They would be around probably twenty five hundred. Right. So that, that's a pretty big They're gap. Just a larger person. Yeah, but then you have the same plate size. It's like then the food on your plate's gonna look a lot smaller. Yeah. So not only do you have to deal with the idea that the portions that we've been taught are wrong when it comes to women in restaurants, but also just in terms of the presentation, so how you look at something, the That's plate, true, right? Yeah. And so one of, one of the undercover tips that I think is helpful when dieting or trying to acclimate yourself to a more positive relationship with food is not to use smaller plates when I'm talking like tiny ass plates, right. but use plates that are more proportional to the food size or servings that I you use, use small right? Plates. Right? Because I so, have the large yeah. ones and the small, and I'm able to fit my turkey bacon, my eggs, yeah. some avocado, and like a side of salsa all, and I'm completely full off of that. That's very smart. I just thought I'd share I like that. that. Hannah Landry says, how to gain strength whilst endurance training, long distance runner here. So that is actually called uh, concurrent training, and there's someone you should read up on called Alex. I'm gonna butcher his last name. I'm gonna spell it first. V I A D A. I think it's Viada. So I'm butchering his uh, name. Jazz is gonna include some of his resources because he does exactly that, where he does endurance training alongside strength training, known as concurrent training, and it is entirely possible. How uh, does it look different in comparison to regular training? Well, your recovery is gonna be not as good uh, okay. because you're doing another modality. Right. So you're doing extra work on top of that. So you're uh, the volume overall that you could handle when it comes to strength training will be less. Then again, strength training isn't as taxing if your goal, uh, than if your goal was pure hypertrophy in terms of total amount of sets. So it's not gonna look a hell of a lot different, especially it depends upon your level. If you're trying to delve 800 pounds, then you really need to plan out your programming if you're also gonna be doing endurance training. Well, this is a female, so she's probably but that was, so that's what I was gonna say is, you know, it's like 185, <laughs> 225 on the yeah. deadlift. That is very feasible to do alongside, you know, marathon training. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I don't I don't think it's a big issue. Lil Beastie dot fit 
says, at what point in strength training do you suggest getting a coach, especially if you want to compete in powerlifting one day? So you need a proper powerlifting meet. You're probably going to need a peak and it depends upon how far along you are, what that peak means. But if you plan on competing, it should be at least several months out. So at least two to three months out, a coach shouldn't just be handling your peak. They should get to know you, what it works with regards to volume, intensity, mm -hmm. frequency. I would say get a coach as soon as you feel that you have the basics down pat. So you know how to squat, you know how to deadlift, you know how to bench, you've been making progress, but you want an eye over you watching an astute uh, eye that could say, you know what, that form's not so great. This is what you should do probably better for your body. I think you'll respond better to this. And it really, it, it can short track. If you take a look at it as an investment in your goals, it really can short track your journey. And I can say like, I honestly couldn't imagine having gotten into powerlifting without having somebody guiding me through it. I, I know that there were a lot of things with my form and just how I was trying to increase the weight, decrease the weight, all of that, that I know I couldn't have done without a coach. So I do feel that it is important to have Remember when you used one. to max out before we yes. started talking and yeah. your nose would bleed before, like you'd bang yeah. your head against the bar. Yeah. You know, it's fucking time. I, I, would, I would sniff, sniff ammonia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I remember that. And then Omar put me in check and said, Hey there, sister. Hey there, sister. Take it easy. Just like that. And that's all it took. And now I, uh, I can deadlift 652 pounds. Jen mm, underscore says, building muscle is a bitch especially if you're vegan, without making fun of me, any suggestions. We are not gonna make fun of you. We appreciate any and all types of diet styles. Dietary disciplines or choices diet made for styles. ethical reasons. Yep, diet styles, let's go with that. Uh, it is entirely possible as a vegan to build a lot of muscle. It's one of those things where I think it's a misconception. There are vegan sources of protein. One, you can buy just vegan There's protein so powder. Much, yeah. so it's usually a rice hemp mix or a rice pea mix where it'll be a composite so you get a complete amino acid profile. But as we spoke before, beans and lentils are actually absurdly high when it comes to protein content. So I'd say uh, it is a common misconception when it comes to vegans or to people that want to be vegan that it's hard to get the required protein intake. As a woman, if you take a look at how much protein you need daily, and that's the big difference between a, a vegan diet and a non-vegan diet would be the ease of protein sources. But if you take <laughs> a look at your required amount, it would be roughly one gram per pound of lean body weight. Mm -hmm. So if you're 130 pounds and you're 20% body fat, that means you're- Only of lean body weight? So it, it it really depends on a couple different things. 3DMJ, Eric Helms, very smart coach, actually recommends one gram per pound of body weight for satiety. So the protein's higher. You're wondering about your diet? Well, no, because I'm just thinking when I got my DEXA scan, it was like 75 pounds of body, of right. lean body weight. So that'd be the minimum threshold. Okay, yeah. okay. So let's say someone's 20% body fat. So that means, and they weigh 130, that means 26 pounds of fat. They have 104 pounds of lean mass. That'd be 104 grams per day. That's very feasible. You know, okay, a, a cup right. of lentils, I think, has 20 grams. So but, it's not that hard. But the biggest thing, and this is when I was kind of, you know, eating more vegan foods, mm. a lot of it is really carbohydrate based mm -hmm. too. So there's like, there will be, you know, 20 yeah. grams of protein in the serving, but it's also like 60 grams of carbs. So how do you balance that out? Is it just like you, those make up the majority of your meals and then your midday snacks to get your greens and would be things like salads or. Yeah. So your, your protein sources wouldn't be pure protein sources, like an egg white where right. it's all protein. Yeah. yeah so you, you have to factor that in. So when you have your lentils, of course, then you're also having carbohydrates. Yeah. So you have to balance. Uh, it out. But when you add everything up between your nuts, uh, seeds, butters, beans, lentils, uh, uh, what do you call it, certain grain sources that are actually high, spinach in a high enough dose and a high enough serving actually has protein. When you add all that up, tofu, 100 grams really isn't that hard. Yeah. And that would be like the threshold for most people. Okay, cool. Yeah. Kloops says, not a question, but please come out with Flourish Part 2. And I'm assuming you're talking about Flourish Strength, which was the program that we had launched. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say about that? We're actually currently Big announcement. Big announcement. Huge game. announcement. Put it We're in the title. currently playing with the concept because I see that there is that gap in the on the female fitness side when it comes to good information. The idea of taking a group of people on a journey, so it wouldn't just be a program, it'd be more subscription based, where it'd be programming you get weekly, your macronutrients, technique. There'd be a group where individuals can all communicate and ask their questions. There would be a weekly QA where, you know, once a week for two hours I'd sit down and any questions you have. 
I'd be able to answer. So it would be a community. The concept would be to take you on your journey and get you to your goal. Most people, a program is a good idea, but then once you're done the program, you where do you go? You don't know where to go after that. And finish should be a lifelong journey. So playing around with that concept, I think it could be pretty cool where we would put you know, a good amount of information there. And I think it'd really help people out in terms of educating them because I, I, I don't mean this in a rude way, but when we did the previous Q and A, I wasn't saying anything crazy um, in terms of the oh, complexity yeah. of information, but people will, were quite receptive to yeah. and looking at other influencers and the content they put out, I think there's just that absence for yeah, whatever reason. Definitely, so. especially in the female fitness community, obviously like a lot of us just get into training and we don't, always know exactly what it is that made us have the body that we have. We just went to the gym and things happened. But when you actually have somebody who can talk you through it and guide you through it and have programming that is literally geared to you and your goals, it's the best thing ever, you know. Oh, it's gonna be pretty cool. So maybe yeah. leave a comment in the comment section below if you're excited about that idea. We've been playing around with it. Something else, I don't know if I want to reveal everything that I think should be included. I don't know if I'm playing, I, I feel like it's a. It's a. It's, a, it's, it's brewing. happening. It's brewing. It's brewing. Yes. Someone's cooking. Yeah. It's a stew. But uh, what I was gonna say, I don't know if I want to announce every one of the features because I have to look at what is also out there. Right. And I feel other people are gonna copy it once oh, we do it. Yeah, that's because very it's, true. Because it's, uh, it's quite robust. Yeah. So it'd be ch like, I'm thinking in my head, probably like $15 a month, something like that. And they get all these things mm -hmm. where you want to give always more value than what you're asking, yes. uh, what you're charging, so. It's gonna be really good. Yeah, we're, we're gonna keep it sort of on the down low for now just because we don't want to, like he said, give too much information. But it's gonna be good. It'll be for all walks of life. All walks. Okay guys, so that is going to conclude this Q&A. We probably got in an additional three or four questions in this one, so that's that's what I can. We've answered six questions in three hours. Consider that a success. So uh, again guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to throw the video a thumbs up. Make sure to go check out Omar Isaf's channel. Omar, why don't you come on over and say hello? Who are you? Basitos. No. <laughs> like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel, Omar's channel. Check out the other videos that him and I have done together. I'll have a playlist or just some videos linked in the description box. And that's it. Love you guys so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, line? Besitos. Are we eating food? Besitos. Besitos. Fast. Bye. <laughs>